Hello, my name is Fredjid, and welcome to another Red Power vs. Vanilla Minecraft tutorial. My goal with these tutorials is to compare Red Power circuits and contraptions to their vanilla Minecraft counterparts. So today we're going to demonstrate all of the logic blocks that are available as of Red Power 2 pre-release 4B. I'm going to assume that you have general Minecraft redstone knowledge, so I won't be going into too much depth for each of these circuits. If there's something you really don't understand, feel free to post in the comments, or you can check the Minecraft wiki entry on redstone circuits. First, let's quickly check out the basic logic gates. Here we have one of the simplest gates, a NOT gate. The vanilla version is quick and cheap to make, costing only a single redstone torch, while the red power version uses six redstone in its recipe. However, the advantages of the red power versions of all of these logic gates are that they can be attached to walls or ceilings, and can be tiled together to make very compact circuits. They can also be easily rotated in place by using a screwdriver. Most of them are also much smaller than their vanilla equivalents, and though it might not look it, this knot gate is actually 50% smaller, taking up only one block instead of two. Next is the NOR gate. Again, this red power version is half the size at only one block instead of two. It costs a little over five redstone to craft, however. This gate has another useful feature, though. You can determine which inputs are included in the circuit by right-clicking on it to cycle through all of the available options. This is a great feature for squeezing your circuits into tight spaces by forcing an adjacent wire to be disconnected. It can also come in handy when trying to debug and test your circuits by allowing you to disconnect a section that you don't want to influence your tests. Here is the OR gate. It's one third the size of the Minecraft redstone equivalent, and it costs five redstone as opposed to vanilla's three. It also shares the input cycling feature that the NOR gate has. Now we come to the AND gate. Obviously, a two-input AND gate is going to take up much less space and resources. But since the red power AND gate has three inputs, I built a three-input vanilla gate as well. At this point, comparing the sizes and resources becomes a little bit meaningless, since there are multiple ways to build the more complicated logic elements in vanilla Minecraft. And each design uses different amounts of space and resources. So all I'm going to tell you is that the red power AND gate uses almost eight redstone in its design. And as you can see, it also features the input toggle ability. Here's the NAND gate. This circuit costs eight redstone to craft. It's also the last of the circuits to feature the input toggling. This is the XOR gate. It costs 10 redstone to craft. Nice and compact. And here is its counterpart, the XNOR gate. It also takes 10 redstone to craft. Works as advertised. OK, now we start to see some of the more interesting single block circuits from Red Power. This is an RS latch, or an RS NOR latch if you prefer. It only costs about 9 redstone to craft, so it's actually pretty economical. The Red Power RS latch works basically the same way a normal redstone latch works. And it even burns out if both inputs are on at the same time, so watch out. I've built a compact RS latch circuit over here as well, just to show how small it can be. This one is really cool. It's the toggle latch. It's basically a T flip-flop with a built-in lever for manual override all in a single block. So over here, I've built a piston-based T flip-flop to compare it to. 
There are tons of different designs out there for these things, but this one is pretty common. And here is the red power toggle latch. You can see that it works basically the same way. That little lever on it is not just for show though. You can right click on it to toggle its state. And this button back here is just to demonstrate that the toggle latch has two different inputs, but they both behave the same way. Also, it's very cheap. It only costs four redstone to craft. Over here is the sequencer. It's constructed with only five redstone, and it's a little bit like a clock with four outputs. So I've built a redstone five clock for comparison, but I've only hooked up one output. You can right click on the sequencer to set the precise timing in increments of 50 milliseconds, 1 second, or 10 seconds. It's synchronized with Minecraft world time too, so if you set it to 300 seconds, it will take a full day-night cycle to rotate. Similar to the sequencer is the timer. It's like a toggleable clock, which I've built over here out of redstone. The redstone toggleable clock that I built has the same length of on and off signals, so to make the red power demonstration similar, I've added a toggle latch to the circuit. The timer sends out a single pulse to its outputs when it hits the torch on its north side. Sending a signal to any of its inputs will stop the clock. It actually has three outputs and three inputs. The east and west sides, or left and right, double as both input and output. You can right click on it to set the time just like with a sequencer. The timer costs about seven redstone to craft. Here's the buffer gate. It's very simple, basically just an intersection of wires, but it only allows the redstone signal to travel one way. To do the same thing with a vanilla circuit, you would probably need to use repeaters like this. The buffer gate costs about 8 redstone to craft. This is a pulse former. It simply sends a short pulse when its input goes from off to on. It's a much shorter pulse than this vanilla version here, but that can be adjusted with more circuitry of course. The pulse former itself does not have any options, however. It costs 9 redstone. Here we have a multiplexer. It basically uses one input to determine which of the other two inputs will be the output. This one costs 9 redstone. So in other words, it's sort of like a minecart track switch, allowing you to choose which of two incoming signals will be your outgoing signal. This is one way to build it using vanilla redstone. Finally, we get to the counter. By right clicking on it, you can set the maximum count, the amount to increment the count by when a signal is received on the east or right side, and the amount to decrement the count by when a signal is received on the west or left side. Right now I have it set to increment and decrement by 1, with a maximum of 4, so it will take 4 hits on this pressure plate to push the count to 4, which will light the other lamp. Notice that I can hit the decrement side at any time and the count will go down. Bringing the count back down to 0 will light the first lamp. I decided not to build the vanilla version of this because honestly, I'm not skilled enough with redstone to do it yet, especially with the amount of control that this red power block gives you. Well, that wraps up the red power logic circuits. Here's a quick rundown of the base material costs for each one. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look. As always, your feedback in the comments or via PM is very welcome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.